Greetings, men of 222. It's great to be with you today. If you've trusted Christ as your Savior, are you aware how blessed you really are? This means that God chose you. You have a unique calling from God as a child of God. We see this in the scripture in Ephesians 1, verses 3 through 6, where it says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ, just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we would be holy and blameless before him. In love, he predestined us to adoption as sons through Jesus Christ in himself, according to the kind intention of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, which he freely bestowed on us in the beloved. Isn't that remarkable that God, through Jesus Christ, gave us, chose us from the foundation of the world? Not last week, not even last year, not even 10 years ago, not even 30 years ago, but from the foundation of the world. But if God called us, what did he call us to? We have this unique calling because if we've trusted Christ as our Savior, then God has called us. John the Baptist, for example, had a very specific calling. The angel said to him, don't be afraid, Zacharias, that's John the Baptist's father, for your petition has been heard and your wife Elizabeth will bear a son and you will give him the name John. You will have joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth, for he will be great in the sight of the Lord, <clears throat> and he will drink no wine or liquor, and he will be filled with the Holy Spirit while yet in his mother's womb. And he will turn many of the sons of Israel back to their God. It is he who will go, what, as a forerunner before him, before Jesus, and the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers back to the children <clears throat> and the disobedient to the attitude of the righteous so as to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. So we are a people prepared for the Lord. Keep Make no mistake about that. We have free will and some other things that God has given us, but we are children of his and we have been given because we are children of his, we have a unique, specific calling. Most of us are called to far less public callings than John the Baptist, but we are called to be God's hands and feet on earth. We are called to be light in a dark world so that God can call people to him, seeing who others, uh, others who have been called. They can see in us what God's calling does. God's calls Christians to live holy, and that means separate lives. We're to be different. We're told to turn our cheek if someone hits us on the cheek. That's not the social norm, is it? We're told to do nothing from selfishness, unheard of in our modern world. We're told to never pay back evil for evil, and we're told to do unto others as we would want them to do unto us. We're told to love the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. In fact, it gets really crazy in that we're told to love our neighbors as ourselves. When God has his sights set on you, he will find you wherever you are, however he needs to find you. I'm going to tell you a story about a woman named Velma Barfield. You've never heard of Velma Barfield. She was born in North Carolina in October of 1932. She was abused as a child, and she eloped with a man at age 17. So for a while, things were good. She had a son and a daughter, but her husband began to drink and abuse her. She was working two full-time jobs to support the family, but she had a nervous breakdown. So they gave her drugs, and the drugs gave her some relief but they caused a dependency. So on March 13th of 1978, Belma Barfield confessed to poisoning four men 
including the man she was to marry. Wow, four men. In prison, she was convicted and sent to prison, and in prison she came off drugs cold turkey. It almost killed her. Yet each night, outside her cell, a guard listened to Christian radio. And one night, an evangelist invited everyone who could hear his voice to accept the forgiveness of Jesus Christ. Later, Velma said, The horror of my life ever since childhood was unbearable, but the marvelous revelation that God knew I was hopeless without him. That's why he sent his only son, Jesus. Jesus was blameless, paid the penalty for my sins because I couldn't. I couldn't undo my grievous sins. I couldn't bring those people back to life. It was too late to go back, but I realized I could go forward. So over the next five years, as Velma appealed her death sentence, she grew as a Christian and she led many women to Christ. She corresponded with many outside the prison walls who came to know Christ, but God did not choose to stop her execution. Now, you and I would say that's a sad part of the story because we would think that this woman who was committed to Christ, that God would have saved her, but he didn't. She had a unique calling from God and her job was done. Aren't you glad God's grace can save even in prison through a Christian evangelist over the radio? I don't know how you were saved, but for me, it wasn't like that. But the net result's the same. I know that I couldn't pay for my sins, and I am thankful that he paid for them. We might prefer to be a Billy Graham, say, versus a Velma Barfield, but it's God's choice, not ours. Our calling is to do everything we can in a manner pleasing to God. If we don't like what we've been called to, it's like the scripture in Isaiah that says this, Will the clay say to the potter, What are you doing? Or the thing you're making say, He has no hands? I mean, look, you and I can't tell God what our roles need to be. We just need to do whatever our roles are heartily, as best we can. Our calling comes at salvation, no question about that. But often along the way, God changes our lives and he deepens our call. You know, I was saved August the 1st of 1986, but it was in September of, of, see, of 1996 that I really recognized that I wanted to give my life to God to follow him completely. Let me tell you a story of a changed, changing experience for a man who later became a pastor. The man's name was Ed Jackson, and at the time he was a highway patrolman working undercover at The Ohio State University. The time was 1972, and the campus was in an upheaval over the Vietnam War. Ed had served his country in the military. He was a Marine, and he was a patriot's patriot, buddy. One day, Ed and some other patrolmen were protecting the administration building while protesters were outside throwing rocks and other things as they were burning the American flag. Well, needless to say, Ed was disgusted uh, by the behavior of the mob. And at one point, a boy ran up the steps. There were these brick steps or cement steps. And he ran up these steps to get closer so that he could throw a rock through a window in the administration building. But as he turned to go back to the crowd, somebody in the crowd threw a rock and hit him right in the eye. Well, he went down like a lump of potatoes and he began to scream, help me, help me. Ed and the rest of the guys had a dilemma. They realized that nobody in the crowd was going to help their fellow, and the patrolman didn't want to. They were disgusted with his behavior, and it was going to endanger them to go out and help him while these other people are throwing rocks. But putting personal feelings aside and safety, they rushed outside and they dragged the boy back to safety. 
Ed remembers looking at the boy. <coughs> he told me this story. He said he remembered looking at the boy, and the Lord said to him in his soul, in his heart, he said, Ed, he sure is unlovely, isn't he? Oh, yes, said Ed. He certainly is unlovely, Lord. And then Ed simply tells the story that the Lord said to him, Ed, so were you. You were just as unlovely. Ed's life changed that day as he realized that God had sent him just like he was this unworthy student. He, he became a pastor. He planted at least three churches that I know of. And till the day he died, he was faithful to the Lord Jesus Christ in telling the word to people so that they too could trust in Christ. We must never become so high and mighty that we forget our own sin and believe that our righteousness is our own righteousness. Jesus said we should forgive each other just as God in Christ also has forgiven us, Ephesians 4 and 32. We forgive not because somebody deserves it, but because Christ forgave us and we didn't deserve it either. Remember the golden rule? As you would that men should do to you, do to them also likewise. Luke 6 and 31. The takeaways for this week, if a person is trusted in Christ as Savior, they were chosen before the beginning of the world, before the world began. God's calling on our lives is irrevocable and absolute because of his sovereignty. He is totally totally in control. The call to be a Christian is not easy, but neither was Christ's death on the cross. We need to be willful and deliberate about loving God and loving our neighbor. Perhaps we should pray and remind ourselves every morning of that truth. Lord, today may I follow you by loving you with my whole heart, and my neighbor as myself, Lord. And lastly, whatever you do, do your work heartily as for the Lord, rather than for men, because it is for the Lord that you and I labor on earth. See you next Saturday. Lord willing, and the creeks don't rise. Remember your unique calling and be intentional this week as you honor Jesus.